First thing I like to do is pull the staples out of the boxes. Uh, I've been cut so many times by these things. They scratch the bike when you're pulling them out. If you just have a pair of side cutters or pliers, it's really easy just to remove those five staples first. Break the glue. And, oh, and look at that. Oh yeah. Nice low stand over. Great one for get mom out on the trails with the kids too. Let's uh, peel this off and get a look at it. All right, got the frame wall. This thing looks great. I'm gonna remove the face plates here on the stem. All right, we're bringing the handlebar around. Let's just keep an eye on the orientation of everything so we can, kind of comes in natural. There it is there. And reattach the face plates. I'm just get them snugged up and then we'll center and, and tighten it down in a moment. Okay, and then using the etched markings here on the handlebar, just get that centered at the right angle. There we are. Then tighten these down to five newton meters, alternating and just pay attention, try and uh, keep the gap the same on the top and bottom of the plates as you tighten them up. And then next we'll align the bar and the fork for your steering. Just using the front of the bar, looking down at the lower dropouts of the fork. You can see that that's straight. With a four mil Allen wrench, I'm just gonna make sure that the top cap assembly's snug. I'm gonna back it off and readjust. About one to two Newton meters. That just sets the bearing tension on the headset. The pinch bolts on the stem are what lock the, the steering in place. So starting on the lower bolt, just give that snug and then alternating We'll bring these up to five newtons as well. Next on the front here, we've got the cable guide for the fork, just a two mil Allen wrench. Just the cable housing in there. And then snug that down. Not too tight, you don't wanna strip that out. Just about one or two newton meters. Just till it's holding the cable there. Great. Uh, and then as well, uh, with a zip tie, you can hold the rear brake and rear shift line in place on this Brazon cable guide. Now we'll install the wheels. For the front wheel, uh, it's important that in the spare parts box, we collect these, the axle caps for the 15 mil hub. And these just clip right onto the outside of the hub here, just like so. Okay, so we're gonna loosen the axle, uh, flip the quick release down, and then use the handle as, as the tool. It sits into a recess in the axle so you can unthread. Pull out your brake pad spacer. Hang on to that for travel or for transporting the bike. And a little bit of grease on the axle. And then just pay attention to the rotor sliding into the, between the pads and the caliper. Line that up first and then install the axle. And so let's snug that down and then using the quick release, fold that over to lock it in place. For the rear wheel, again in the small parts box, you'll find your quick release. Just unthread the cap off the end and remove one of the springs and then a little bit of grease on that and install through the disc side and replace the spring and the cap here. So here, make sure you get the chain, the, the cog set in between the chain here and then Again, pay attention to the rotor going between the pads on the caliper, and from there the wheel will drop into place. Let's snug up the quick release until when you turn the handle it's in line with the hub, 
and then you can lock that into place. What I like to do here is I'll drop the bike down to the ground and I'll let the weight of the bike settle that rear wheel quick release into the frame. So I'll put my weight on the bike, open the quick release, let it settle into place and close it again. And that way we know everything's nice, everything's lined up for the brake. Okay. Install the chain onto the narrow wide chain ring, making sure the outer plates are sitting on top of the wide profile of the teeth, the inner plates on the thin profile of the teeth. And last but not least, pedals. A little bit of grease on the pedals, the thread. There's a six mil tooling on the inside or 15 mil tooling on the outside. And they're left and right specific, marked on the end of the axle. Left side is left hand thread or counterclockwise, right side's right hand thread and clockwise. So let's start those in. And then snug those down. Great. Next we'll work on the brakes. With a 5mm Allen wrench, we're going to loosen off the caliper mount bolts, top and bottom, so that you've got free float motion of the caliper. Give the wheel a spin, we're going to pull and hold the front brake, and then just lightly snug these up, not over tightening them just yet. So give those a little snug, and there we go. We'll just check to see if it's dragging, but we're lined up. If it was dragging, then just readjust and retry. Same on the rear. Loosen the pinch bolts. Get the caliper free floating. Spin the wheel, pull and hold the brake, and then just snug those bolts up just tight. And there we are. Now we'll adjust the gearing. Great. It's shifting excellent right from the factory. Okay, a nice feature with these brakes is we've got some adjustment for the uh, rest point for the lever where it sits. So for smaller hands, using a two mil Allen wrench, you can find the bolt there and then we're just gonna unthread this bolt and draw the lever closer into the bar for its resting position. Great for smaller hands. Last but not least, a uh, bolt check from the front to back, and then we'll set the bike down and adjust the seat height and uh, an angle, uh, as well as pressure in the tires. So we've just done the brakes. That's good. We've just gone over the stem, so we know that's okay. Uh, pinch bolts on the crank here with a four mil newton meter, or excuse me, four mil Allen wrench. And those, we're gonna make sure they're at 12 to 14 newton meters. The five mil end cap on the end is similar to the top cap on the stem. It's just for preload for the bearings and then the pinch bolts actually lock it in place. So that preload cap would only be set to one to two newton meters. And then we tighten down the pinch bolts. Derailleur mount bolts. Check that, as well as the hanger mount bolt. And we're great. Uh, air the tires up. Just a note on these Presta valves, uh, they've got the dust cap you remove. When you need to put air in, uh, you have to open the valve core by unthreading the nut, the lock nut at the top. Then just depress that and that just frees up the valve to be able to function when you put your pump on. So you'll need a pump that works with a Presta. Um, majority of the pumps do. And uh, when you're finished again, thread that locking nut back down and just snug that up, sealing the valve. 
and reinstall your dust cap. You'll notice this pump here is set up for use with a Schrader valve, but we need it for the Presta. Most pumps are interchangeable or have some sort of, this one we flip the head around and we've got the Presta setting right there. And then we'll set those at 25 PSI. And of course you can adjust according to your riding style and rider weight. And we'll drop the bike down and set the seat height and angle. Put a grease on the inside of the frame there. And we'll install the seat post. And close down with the quick release. If you need to tighten the quick release, there's a five mil bolt on the other side you can use to snug it up and set the tension. Go in for the tooling on the top of the saddle just to make sure everything's snugged up. The Exfusion Velvet RL2 fork, it's got uh, air spring and cartridge damping on the other side. Uh, handy little chart on the lowers here, identifying the base setting for your rider weight. So at a 100 pound rider, we'd be looking at 55 PSI. So you take your high pressure shock pump here, install. This currently has 85 PSI. We're going to bleed out down to 55. That sets our spring. Now to control the spring, we need to use our damper features. The blue dial on top is a lockout switch. Counterclockwise is open, clockwise to, to the end of the stop is locked. So we run that open and then at the bottom we've got a, our rebound dial. Imagine looking up at the dial, we want to decrease the damping for a 100 pound rider. And back this pretty much all the way out, maybe a click or two in. And that controls how fast the fork opens again after being compressed. Here we have it. It's the 26 inch wheel Yamma Jamma, the Mountain Destroyer. This is a great offering for a trail bike beginning for your child or even the more petite mom in your life. Uh, highlights on this bike for me, internal routing for your dropper post. You can run a stealth dropper post in this frame, no problem. Uh, we've got the Tender Riders, low durometer, ultra low durometer grips, which are lock on. Uh, Again, with the X-Fusion Velvet fork with your rebound and compression damping uh, air sprung so you can set to your rider weight. 10-speed GX drivetrain with a clutch Type 2.1 uh, ceram clutch derailleur to keep the chain tension. Direct mount brood crank, 160 mil length, which is awesome for this size frame, uh, as well as the direct mount chain ring. Uh, so a nice, clean looking setup, easy to change the ring. Uh, hydraulic disc front and rear, super powerful and really easy to set up. And uh, again, we've got that, uh, the lugs and, and uh, gusseting internally done on these hydroform tubes. So really beef up the head angle on this, uh, uh, beef up the head tube on this because of the slack head angle. Uh, pivotal fore and aft mast seat. Really great thing about this bike as well is to shave weight and for more trail control, we've got the brood uh, 26 inch tubeless rim and it comes complete with Maxxis tubeless ready tires. So you can set this up for ultra plush and uh, ultra traction. There it is, Yamma Jamma.